Uh, let's go to Mick Mulvaney right now. You, of course, remember him, the former uh, acting White House <laughs> chief of staff, uh, expert on all budget matters as well. Um, Mick, very good to have you. This battle back and forth, whether it's going to be a trillion dollars, whether it's going to be three, three and a half trillion dollars, it, it is a lot of money we don't really have. I mean, we've, we've poured about $10 trillion into coronavirus relief. If you add the trillions the Federal Reserve has spent to shore up and buy everything from regular bonds to corporate bonds, municipal bonds, and on top of these congressional measures, uh, where's this all going? Uh, t towards the debt. I mean, that's what it comes down to, right? I mean, keep in mind that the, the budget of the United States every single year, the ones we used to write at the Office of Management and Budget, were about $1.2, $1.3 trillion. The government spends more than that. We spend about $4.5 trillion, but most of that is Medicare and Social Security. But the actual appropriated budget is only $1.2, $1.3, $1.4 trillion a year. So they're talking about a package that is at least as big as that, done in a matter of only a couple of weeks. I think Secretary Mnuchin is right to be fighting back against this $3 trillion absurdity in the House. Um, but the bottom line here is whatever they do spend is going right to the bottom line in terms of the debt and the deficit um, and the interest payment uh, responsibilities for next generation. So I think they're right to sort of take a deep breath and say, wait a second, do we really need to spend this much money? You know, on these unemployment checks of the federal uh, government now doles out on top of state benefits, it was due to $600 a week. It looks like they will remain in some way, shape, or form, maybe not at $600. And that the latest re rationale for continuing them, even at a smaller level, is that the economy seems to be hiccuping. Uh, jobless claims uh, were up week over week for the second week in a row. And I'm wondering whether that is hurting Republicans' argument to stop them. Well, keep in mind, and I think you, you, you hit the nail on the head here, this is a federal supplement. This is not everything that goes into unemployment insurance. Unemployment insurance is run through the states, and that is continuing. This is a federal supplement, a kicker on top of that. So the $600 that we've had since, I think, March or April is on top of the, uh, the ordinary benefits. Keep in mind, during the financial crisis, the depths of the financial crisis in 2008, when the Democrats were in charge of everything, they didn't do $200 worth of supplemental payments. Um, there's a lot of politics behind this, Neil. Believe it or not, Nancy Pelosi really doesn't want to see Donald Trump elected, and she can try and make a political issue here and make hay. Uh, she's absolutely going to do that. I actually think you'd see them be talking about a smaller package if there were a Democrat in the White House, because they understand what the, the, the cost is. And the proof of that is that's what they did the last time we went down this road. So I think that does get lost, the fact that the Democrats did less than this when they were in charge, and that it's a, it's a, it's a kicker on top of this. People are not going to be left out in the cold. This was a supplement. Is the economy struggling? Absolutely. The numbers you saw today are historic. But does it have the ability to come back quickly? It absolutely does. But it's not coming back quickly, right? I'm, I'm just wondering now, given, and it could be these states where they had spikes in cases and a lot of governors, many Republican governors, have had to stall their reopening, if not reverse it in some cases. And I'm wondering if you're just looking at this, stepping back, uh, saying that this, this V-shaped recovery has stopped. Uh, a couple of things. I, I, granted, the longer it drags out, the more it turns into a U instead of a V. Uh, but keep in mind, one of the things, I, I, one of the reasons I think you're seeing some optimism still in the markets is that you know, good news on a vaccine or good news on a therapeutic could change people's psychology. Keep in mind, this is a healthcare crisis. There's no question. It gets, it's an yeah. economic crisis, but there's a huge psychological component here. If people were not as afraid to go back to work, you could see things turn around clearly. Plus, as I think you've reported on the show earlier in the day. More than a trillion dollars of the CARES Act money isn't even out the door yet. So there's a trillion dollars that they appropriated or they approved in April that hasn't hit the economy yet. So that money is all, it hasn't, hasn't left, has not had the impact yet. You don't know if we need the additional money or not. Again, I think discretion is the better part of valor here. Um, and besides, any, any stimulus you do now, Neil, is going to have a real hard time of, of affecting the economy before the election anyway. So we should be looking at the economics of this and not the politics. And the economics may dictate it's better to wait and see. Nick, you know, the president has been saying uh, anyone wants to hear it, even when he was in Texas yesterday, extolling the virtues of our energy independence now, um, that all of that goes away if, if Joe Biden 
is elected. He's gone on to say the same about the stock market surge, uh, the comeback we've had since the virus. That, too, um, amid talk that uh, the former vice president wants to raise taxes, certainly corporate taxes, from 21 to 28 percent. Uh, he has similarly said, uh, you can kiss your 401k goodbye, too, in that, in that environment. Do you buy that? Do you think that a, a, a Joe Biden presidency will tank the markets and the economy? Yeah, I actually do. And I don't think you have to take the president's word for it. You can actually take Joe Biden's word for it. This is what I mean when I say this. Um, when you do a federal budget, you don't just do that year. You do a projection for 10 years out. At least that's been the custom for a long time. Go back and look at the last Biden-Obama budget. And what did they predict for unemployment uh, right now? Certainly, it's, it wasn't as high as it, it was because of COVID. But back before COVID, Biden thought the uh, unemployment would be higher. They thought growth would be lower. They didn't know how to get to two and a half or three and a half or three percent growth. They were just they were talking about that new normal. The country was graying. Productivity was down permanently. It was an anemic outlook on the future of the country. Remember, they were there eight years. And what did you have? He had the slowest recovery in history. He had a lot of things dragging on the economy. Well, to be fair, to be fair, and I don't want to play politics with it, but they were, did come into the middle of a meltdown and losing jobs at a million a month, and they did turn yeah. things around from that. You're right; the growth was was slow and tentative from that, but it was certainly up from where they were eight years later. The, the, the Obama folks have also pointed to the fact. You know, under us, the, the Dow did triple, and then we, we, we gained, you know, millions and millions of jobs. So who was the president to say that he inherited a mess and a depression? That's simply but, not so. What do you say? Again, but look at, the, look at the facts. You can go look at Joe Biden's economic plan right now, and he says he's going to create, I think it's three or five million manufacturing jobs. On day one of the Obama-Biden uh, Obama um, uh, administration, if you go to the end of that, they actually lost net manufacturing jobs. So the proof is there, Neil. Listen, I, I, I get it, and I know folks want to criticize the president for that, but you actually have a, a template here. Joe Biden's been in Washington a long time. You can go back and see what the previous administration did, and that's your choice. Do you really trust that group to sort of take you out of this uh, COVID recession, or do you trust somebody else? But I, I don't think it's hyperbole. It's, certainly, it's politics, because everything so is politics So when they do say, I understand what you're coming on, when they do say, you know, someone who, who would be inheriting a mess, let's say, a Joe Biden were to become president and he's inheriting this post-virus mess, if it is that still, uh, they can point back to the fact, well, we inherited a mess when I was with Barack Obama uh, in 2008, when we were elected in 2009, and the economy was melting down. We're good at handling comebacks from meltdowns, you say? Uh, again, net manufacturing job losses telling people the jobs were never, ever coming back. I mean, you could look at what actually happened. You had a situation, yes, they had a chance to turn it around. Their recovery was, was smaller, I think, than any major recovery in history. Go back to what Reagan did in the 80s. Uh, the bounce back after 2008 was much flatter than that. There's a track record here. You, you, you really don't have to guess. But it was a right? I'm not here, and I'm not an apologist for either side here, but I, I just look at the numbers, right? And, and we did come from losing a million jobs a month to, to, to gaining 200 to 300,000 a month. So I guess, where, where are we on this? If you have to look at promises and forecasts that are wrong, there's a spurge on both parties, right? But so I, I, yeah, I guess, yeah, I, I, is it your sense numbers, when the I, president says that, 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 that it would lead to a crash or a meltdown and all of that, uh, is is that a fair assessment? You're a pretty good number cruncher here. Do you think that's a fair assessment that a rise in the corporate tax rate from 21 to 28 percent will will be the wrong message to send markets and the economy? Look at the look at what they've telegraphed. How does the Democrat Party generally? So let's 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 try and take Biden out of this equation. How do they deal with downturns? Okay, what they're going to want to do uh, is spend a lot more money. You're seeing that telegraphed right now. In fact, not even telegraphed. They're doing it. They're going to want to add regulation, not get rid of it. That's what they did at the end of the financial crisis. That's what Dodd Frank came from. They're going to want to grow the government and increase the government control over the economy. That's what they do. That's the fundamental difference between the two parties. And and I think what the Trump administration has right. proven is that supply-side economics does work and can get you out of a recession or even a slow growth model like we had at the end of the previous administration. Nick, I'm going to take a leap here and put you as a maybe on Joe Biden. Um, so we'll, we'll see what happens, <laughs> all right? Uh, very, very good seeing you. Uh, Nick Mulvaney, the former acting White House the chief of staff. Much, much more on that as well. Uh, thank you again, Mick. I do appreciate it.